Today, as, as many people who have been following the no news have uh, picked up on, is the 70th anniversary of the uh, first detonation of uh, an atomic weapon against civilians in war. Uh, that, of course, the United States uh, dropping the first of two atomic bombs on Japan on the city of Hiroshima on August 6, 1945. And, you know, these are, I'm a, like many people, I'm like a World War II, uh, you know, buff makes it sound like I know more than I do. I'm just... I'm interested in You're it. interested, but a little lazy. Right. I'm yeah. interested, but not interested enough to get really smart uh -huh. about it. But I, so, and I think we brush over these anniversaries so quickly. And, and I just think it's important as Americans to, and if, you, and if you truly, you know, if you love this country as, as I do, and as I know you do, that we understand the mistakes we've made. And I don't mm. even know if this is going to rise us to the level of being a mistake, but it's certainly a matter of some introspection. And I know when I was going to school, and I suspect it was true for you too, that there was really no introspection offered. And I went to a school that they, you know, made its name on being, trying to be thoughtful and open mm. to new ideas. I went to a super lib school, super mm. progressive school. And, but the idea was, is that the Japanese attacked us and they sort of a, a had it coming, and this was a way to end the war and it saved lives. Yeah. And that may well be true. But as we take a look at some of the pictures from Hiroshima, uh, I just think there's some, there's some facts that we have to, as Americans, come to live with while we sit there and during the debate tonight analyze what 10 people in that debate, six or seven people in the first debate, have to say about a nuclear deal with Iran. Well, we do all we can to say that Iran can't have a nuclear weapon when there's only one country in the world that has used nuclear weapons, and it's us. And we did it against uh, two civilian centers. Like, these aren't pictures of soldiers. That's a picture on the steps of a bank in Hiroshima, and that's a shadow of, a, that was a person sitting on the steps. Yeah, exactly. That's the vaporized yeah. shadow of somebody who was killed instantly. I mean, we were showing you pictures earlier of, of some of the, the burns and the, the radiation sickness, and those are horrific pictures, but those are pictures of people who at least temporarily survived. There's many pictures we can't show you because there was nothing left of the people to show. That's how horrific of a weapon it was. Yeah, and the reason why the numbers at Hiroshima and Nagasaki aren't, aren't more precise is because uh, people were vaporized and so were all the records. So yeah. we don't really know exactly, exactly how many people. They've had to, but anyway, so take a look at some of these statistics here. It's Japan sort of somberly uh, at 8.15 this morning when the first bomb went off. They, uh, uh, there were ceremonies uh, in Hiroshima and across Japan. But the 70,000 to 100,000 uh, people were killed instantly uh, 70 years ago today at Hiroshima. 80%, four out of every five were civilians. And then 70,000 more in the days, weeks, and months to follow as people died of radiation sickness that no one knew how to treat. No one knew what it was. No one had ever seen it before. Yeah. Um, so that's 140,000, sort of 150,000 at a minimum that, that we killed on that day. Again, about 120,000 of those people easily, if not more, uh, civilians. civilians. Yeah. Uh, then uh, three days later, uh, on August 9th, we uh, bomb Nagasaki with a plutonium bomb. Uh, Nagasaki is sort of surrounded by hills, so there was slightly less devastation, but the bomb was actually bigger. Um, mm. uh, 35 to 50,000 uh, killed instantly. Uh, and, and the randomness of those 35,000 to 50,000, really 100,000 when you count the ones that came in the days that follow, is that second item there is, we were headed to a city called Kokura to bomb, but the weather was bad and it was clear over Nagasaki, so we bombed Nagasaki. I mean, the, the randomness of where 100,000 people yeah. get to die is stunning. Obviously, if we'd bombed Kokura, then there would have been 100,000 deaths there. Following uh, the bombing of Nagasaki, not immediately, but six days later, we get the, this quote from Emperor Hirohito. Moreover, he says, the enemy has begun to employ a new and most cruel bomb, the power of of which to do damage is indeed incalculable, taking the toll of many innocent lives. Should we continue to fight, he said, not only this was in a radio broadcast, not only would it result in the ultimate collapse and obliteration of the Japanese nation, but also it would lead to the total extinction of human civilization. Again, that's Emperor Hirohito uh, surrendering uh, on August 15th, uh, nine days. So we'll have the 70th anniversary of that. In nine days, his war council, they were still debating. They did not want to surrender after Hiroshima, and there was still a significant debate after Nagasaki yeah. um, of whether to surrender. Uh, then uh, these couple of facts. These I only learned really in the last couple of years, and, uh, but they're, they're almost more terrifying. So though 70,000 died instantly, more or less, uh, at Hiroshima, and then 40,000 at Nagasaki, take a look at this. On March 9th, uh, 1945, 3945, we... Uh, we firebombed Tokyo for the first time. It is the most lethal air attack in history. 84,000 citizens of Tokyo uh, were killed on that day. We destroyed 16 square miles. That's 25% of the, 
of the city. Uh, and that's, that's no nuclear attack. We killed more people yeah. in the firebombing at Tokyo than either Hiroshima or Nagasaki. Then moving forward, take a look at graphic uh, 23. This is all told the firebombing of Tokyo, which again, firebombing in Japan, which began in Tokyo in March of 1945, continued into the summer, really up until close to the uh, time where we dropped the atomic bomb. We destroyed 178 square miles of Japan, completely flattened it essentially. That's 40% of urban Japan. 2.2 million civilian casualties. Uh, 900,000 dead, and as I say as many as 900,000, but that is almost, that's probably the figure. It's uh, anywhere listed from 300 to 900,000, but it's close to a million dead. Again, about 80% civilians. That is more than the number of Japanese combat casualties in the Pacific, yeah. in the theater of operations. Which is by itself horrific. Horrific, but those guys were soldiers. Wait, that was, yes. that was, there was fighting. Yeah. Uh, so I just mean that the, the, whenever, you, this is the amazing thing about World War II, and it's the thing that, like we often will will hear this term World War II buff, and we think of you know old men playing war right. games or something. But you need to study. Like I, I was lucky enough that obviously, as as most do, I learned about World War II, about Hiroshima. I read the book Hiroshima. Like I, I, I've read the survivors' accounts. But every number in World War II is, in the modern context, mind blowing. The number of dead in individual battles. I mean, World War One too, but. World War II is just absolutely hurt. like go to Germany, the, the Dresden. We're gonna, I mean, we can talk about that as well. The numbers are just it, they're hard to fathom with our modern sensibilities, where you know a few thousand are obviously still worthy of shock and horror, but we're talking about that that was just routine. That was nothing back then. Yeah, and we were and they're, uh, and they're really fast. And there are, there are people I think still in government today that that have not learned the lesson that that is a a level, a magnitude of horror that we should do whatever it takes to never return to, that, that the, the reasons that the civilian casualties are as low as they are today is because we force our military to operate in a different way. We force them to develop weapons that operate in a different way. And those sorts of restrictions are not universally approved of by all American politicians, let alone the politicians of other countries. There are, there are some who would not think it that horrible to go back to the way we used to do business. Yeah, uh, that's all, all those things are true. And I'm not trying, this is not a, a bash America segment. I just think that it's critically important that we know and acknowledge, especially on a day like this, what we did. There's no question who started that war. Yeah. Uh, but we have to acknowledge what we did. And uh, you mentioned Dresden, and uh, I hope I got it pronouncing his name right, but uh, Julio Duhat is one of the architects of the strategic, overwhelming strategic air war theory. Mm -hmm. Um, and for the most part in Europe, uh, certainly Dresden showed no signs of it, but, and, and many other cities in Germany as well. But we had some strategic efforts at our bombing, not in Japan, certainly not at Hiroshima and Nagasaki, uh, and not in any way with the firebombing of Tokyo or of the 65 other Japanese cities that we firebombed. Yeah. As the well. intent was to, to break their will, to break their back, to destroy whatever means necessary. The idea is to destroy civilian populations, and that's yeah. what we did. And, and we're Americans, and we did that, and maybe we were right to, and maybe it did save lives. Maybe it saved Japanese lives in the long run of what would happen if we'd invaded. Uh, it certainly saved American lives. There's no question about that, because yeah. we certainly American troops would have died in an invasion of Japan. But it doesn't mean that we shouldn't be asking the question of whether what we did was just, of what, whether we did was right. And no matter what you think of it, what, I don't have the answer to that question. I, don't, I can't. I can answer both sides. I think effectively, but but we should really understand what we did. And yeah. and we and and it's a and and when Japan mourns that day, uh, as they now evaluate under Prime Minister Abe whether to remilitarize a little, um, as Japan honors that day, we we should also because because yeah. we we did it. We killed those people, and maybe yeah. we were justified, but we certainly did it. The, the point of this segment is not to bash America, but we, we do try to remember some of these things, like the bombing of Hiroshima and Nag Nagasaki. I think most people in America do know of those things, and we're familiar to some extent with what we've done in Europe, what we did in Southeast Asia, what we did in the Middle East, and in many of these cases, we have lost a great deal of American soldiers. We have suffered in these wars. But we have never experienced, outside of the Revolutionary War, the Civil War, which we brought on ourselves, we've never had to experience a Hiroshima or a Dresden or a Tokyo or any or, or a Syria or an Iraq or, or a, a or a London. 
Or exactly. Right, yeah. Yeah, we've never had to experience domestically those sorts of things. And considering the number of conflicts that we get involved in historically and especially recently, it's important for us to try to try to put ourselves in the place of people who actually experience firsthand that horror in a way that we thankfully, blessedly have never had to.